Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Thursday, December 28th, 11.27 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017. Arctic air dominates U.S. and Canada. Record-breaking lows expected into New Year's Day. Let's go to the map. I'll step it through. This is Christmas, the 26th, yesterday. Here we are today. And notice... The polar vortex dipping down into the northeast here. With the temperature anomaly kicking off at an average for thousands of square miles at 20 degrees below normal. Sitting pretty over here where I'm at. Let's step it forward. Not looking much better for the 29th. Twenty ninth, thirtieth, thirty first. You could see this amazing frontal boundary here. <laughs> Literally seventy degree difference in a two hour drive. Uh, this is typical of grand solar minimums. When we start to get this sinusoidal pattern of deep troughs repeating, you're going to see that this is the cutoff line that I was talking about earlier today. For comfort zone, it's even drawn right here. There's the line. Heads up out here, especially in the purple zones. Just let it run through. There's January 1st. Even North Texas. Look at how the Four Corners is staying put. Now these darker red zones it could be very arid in the coming years. Uh, I would stay near the Continental Divide for water source. Here we are January 2nd. Two-thirds of the in almost three quarters of the entire nation below normal. And they're still going to talk about how hot it is in California to keep up the global warming ruse. They're going to talk about Southern California. Trust me on that. This is January 2nd. Here is the third. <laughs> and the fourth. This temperature anomaly is going to be way down here into the tropics all the way down into Mexico. Are you looking at the map? <laughs> There's the fifth, Florida. Record lows. It's coming. I hope there's a storm system associated with it so Florida gets a nice walloping in snow. There's the sixth. It doesn't get any better, Florida. Seventh, you're warming up, Florida. <laughs> It's a three-day shot. And that's a heads up. Pete, update. Continued frigid temperatures tonight with more record-breaking cold likely. Temperatures are falling. Records everywhere are dropping. We made it through the coldest day of winter, at least thus far. Both Dulles, 23 degrees in Baltimore, 24 degrees set or tied. Record low maximums for the date. In Washington, 25 tied its coldest December 28th at Reagan National Airport. Brrr. Grand Solar Minimum much. How cold is it in Watertown? A record-breaking 32 below zero. That's you, New York. Busting out the snowblower. Michigan's Porcupine Mountains digging out after 72 inches of global warming. Kelowna will break the snowfall record today. It just happened as we're doing the video. Boom. Kelowna is a few centimeters. Boom. They just hit it. Environment Canada meteorologist Alan Kodal says if the snow keeps falling, it did, then they'll set the all-time snowfall record today. Breaking the record set back in 1923. Wonder what happened back in there, 1923. Oh my gosh, that was the centennial minimum back here. These cycles look very similar. Hmm. I wonder if there's a pattern. 
Record cold to stick around to the start of 2018. Yeah, we just looked at it in that flow-through map. This is for you, Jimmy, the dunk. It is going to be freezing in Boston. Get out of Dodge. Look at those wind chills. Boom, Boston. Tropical Cyclone Hilda hits Western Australia. I'll let you read about it. You go from hail to record heat to cyclones. Welcome to six-degree warm oceans. The sun activity has collapsed to the lowest levels in 9,300 years. It is not fake. It is true. We'll come over to the graphic. Here's present global warming. You can see from the GISP2, the Greenland ice core, that there has been a global drop-off and co a cooling event for the last 4,000 years. Here are the super maxima, grand maxima peaks. Boom, boom, boom. And you can see a downward trend to our little global warming. P Al Gore time right here. Should be embarrassed. But the cosmic ray flux and the total solar radiance hasn't been this low since at least 8,200 year cooling or earlier. So the solar, uh, the sun's total solar irradiance is at an all-time low. The sun is the source of all warmth on the planet. It does control the climate. Without it, we would not exist. Like everything else, it's critical in, in nature. The term lunatic referred to people who seemed to go a bit strange when there was a full moon. Some people are perhaps susceptible to its gravitational forces. After all, it's the moon that lifts the entire oceans, creating high and low tide. There are people who have varying mood swings and others who are a tad more steady. Yet we have our ups and downs, and there are the ups and downs of the sun. And there's even a human excitability index here you can read about. But we are going into a cooling period, folks, and let's talk about it. Amid warmer winters, scientists say Alaska sea ice conditions are shockingly bad. That's because Alaska's warming. The amount of sea ice off western Alaska is jaw-droppingly low this winter, hurting hunters and coastal communities. And that's because during a grand solar minimum, Guys, do you know about Beringia? This is the key to the last ice age. And during the last glacial maximum, there was a land bridge here. And now as we move up through ta the time series, I have it here. You can see as we progress towards present, the sea level rises catastrophically right now at 12,000 years ago. It comes up about 150 meters. And then about 6,000 years ago, we started to get a flow from the Arctic Ocean into the Pacific, which we now have in modern time. There was no flow back then during the uh, glacial period when sea levels were low. This was a land bridge cutting off contact. Contact didn't occur until around 10,000 years ago. And then the tidal currents have been occurring since then. Now, why should we care? Well, it's the nature of the Pacific systems. And if you look at the precipitation map here, during the last glacial maximum, when they were cut off, the Aleutian Islands and the entire coastline here in Alaska, all the way down the northwestern coast of uh, North America here was temperate and had all kind of Eurasian fauna all the way out in the Aleutians. Uh, the fauna were prolific. And during the last ice age, come down here, in East Beringia, the northern Arctic areas experienced temperatures 1.5 degrees C warmer than today. But some of the southern subarctic regions were two degrees cooler. There's the key right there. And it has to do with the Pacific Ocean holding lots of warmth and moisture, keeping this area warm and ice free while it's freezing up here. I'll leave you links to land bridge cause wire temperature swings. And also the key is the Yupik people. They've lived there through this entire time since the glacial maximum and on. And if you check the archeological record, Pendejo Cave, which is in Southern New Mexico, in Oro Grande, 
has the same fossil assemblages from 16 to 18,000 years ago as does these Yukon sites called Little John. So that makes you wonder if the if the environment in southern New Mexico wasn't the same as this area 14,000 years before present. Which I'm going to suggest the Yukon here on the coast of North America and here were climatically similar. If you connect the dots between these two places, you've drawn a wonderful line that you could live upon. I'll leave you links to all this and you can connect the dots yourself. 4.1 magnitude jolts Quebec sent in by uh, one of our subscribers. This gives you the history of the seismicity in this area and it has a video that has nothing to do with the article. <laughs> Just to point that out. There is some disgusting frack activity with a major 4.1 frack quake occurring in Hennessy followed up by an aftershock. How disgusting is that? If you live in this area, there's millions of people here and you're not writing your senators about the poisons they're pumping underneath of your children, you should be ashamed of yourself. Can a single volcano cool the earth? Absolutely. Is it Mount Agung? Not yet. <clears throat> but this article is simply a ruse to get you to think that geoengineering to save the planet is a good idea. Nothing else. I'll leave you links to it, and you can draw your own conclusions. Let's talk about poop. Some people are confused about poop as being dangerous and carrying parasites. That's untrue. If it's poop from a farm animal, it's good. Manure is nature's fertilizer, and there's a whole complexity to it. And this article breaks it down 100%. There's nothing left out of this article. All herbivores, manure, cows, horses, goat, sheep, llama, alpaca, guinea pig, and rabbit is the top-notch fertilizer for your organic food. Now, omnivores like swine or pigs, poultry, bats, and humans, it's excellent fertilizer, but you have to compost it to a certain degree. And there's different types of omnivore poop that's good for different things. Poultry, for instance, is especially from chickens, is high in phosphorus, uh, which is most important nutrient for flowers and fruit development. So this is great for your fruit trees and your orchards and your flowers and so on. So I'll leave you links to this if you want to learn up on your poop because poop is the key to sustainability at your farm and healthy food. <clears throat> Let's talk about the Milankovitch cycle. You're looking at the last 140,000 years of data. You're looking at the last 100,000 year glacial cycle, bringing us up to, this is the uh, 12,900 year sea level rise event. And here is the quiet solar maximum that we've been experiencing for the last 8,000 years, which you can easily see represented here as this plateau. So this green plateau here, is this red plateau. What I want to point out is the 100,000-year Milankovitch cycle consists of a 8,000-year period of warm, which we're done now. We have already had it, followed by a very rapid drop-off into cooling over a few thousand years. And that's where we're headed during this grand minimum and several grand minimums after. Again and again and again and again, just like the last one. And then we'll stay in a glacial maximum for 50,000 years or 70,000 years. And towards the end is the dust, the glacial dust period, and then a, an end of the glacial period. Major sea level rise to warming and quiescence, which is now ending. This is just to give you a big picture. We can go look at the last four 100,000-year Milankovitch cycles which consists of these warming periods here of between two to 8,000 years each time. And here's ours, which we're ending. And they're all followed by rapid drop-offs. 
into deep glacial periods that last for up to 70,000 years. Do you see the pattern? I hope you do. We're not going to live through most of the pattern. But you are going to live through tw cycle 25, 26, and 27. And 26 is predicted to be weaker than the Maunder minimum, which is when the pressure cooker was invented because they needed to extract nutrition from bones because the population was starving in 1670. So guys, get a pressure cooker. Start reading up on how to grow your own food. Subscribe to our channel. Share this with like-minded people. Start a community. Local food saves communities. Be safe.